Swift provides a special type called result that allows to encapsulate either a successful value or some kind of error type all in a single piece of data. So in the same way an optional might hold a string or might hold nothing at all, for example, result might hold a string or might hold an error. Now the syntax for using it is a little bit odd at first, but it does have an important part to play in our project sometimes. To see result on action, we could start by writing a method that downloads an array of data readings from a server. We'd say something like this. Uh, at state private var output is an empty string. And then in our body, I'm going to have a text of output and straight away start a task that calls a new method called fetch readings, which doesn't exist yet. Okay, I'll make it now. Funk fetch readings is async. And this is going to basically connect to a URL on my server. Here, so we'll do let URL be URL string HTTPS con slash slash HWS.dev slash readings.json. I'll happily, oops, I'll happily force and wrap that. I know it's safe. And then we'll just download that whole data straight away. We can say let data underscore be try await URL session dot shared data from that URL. And then we can decode it to an array of double. We can say let readings uh, equals our try JSON decoder decode array of double dot self from that data. And finally, set our output string to be uh, found readings dot count readings. And we'll do a little catch block just to say uh, print download error like that. This code should work fine. Let's just press Command R and give it a try, see what you think. Okay, found 10,000 readings. Good, all working correct. So it works fine, but it doesn't give us a lot of flexibility. What if we wanna stash the work away, just somewhere else, and do something else while it's running? Like what if we wanna reach a result at some point in the future, perhaps handling any errors somewhere else entirely? Or what if we wanna cancel the work because it's no longer needed? We can get all that using Swift's result type. It's available through an API I've met previously called task. We can rewrite this current code to this. We still have our same URL here, but rather than having do catch, I instead wrap this work in a new task. Fetch task is a new task like this. I can now remove the catch and then simply return the value coming back the way. So rather than say assign to the state directly, just send it back. Now, we've used task before to launch pieces of work, but here, we've actually given this task initializer the name of fetch task. I create this thing, run the code, and assign that to the resulting constant fetch task. And that's what gives the extra flexibility to pass this thing around, or cancel it if needed in the future. And notice how this task closure, this work we're doing, now returns a value. That value gets stored in our task instance so we can read it in the future when we're ready. Or of course, handling errors. And again, this thing can have errors. You can see it's throwing potentially here and here. So if, it, if the networks failed or the decoding failed, that will throw an error. And that's where our result type comes in the result of our task might be a string saying, yeah, we found 10,000 readings, but might also contain an error. And the only way to find out is look inside. It's very, very similar to optionals. So to read the result from our task, we're gonna read its result property like this. Down here we can say, let result be await fetch task dot result like that. Now notice how we haven't tried to use uh, try here. There's no try await fetch task, whatever. That's because result holds the error inside itself. An error might have been thrown, but we don't have to worry about it now unless we want to. Now have a look at this value here because it's not a string, okay? This thing here, result, is our special result type containing a string and error in one. 
Okay, that's the combination here. We haven't actually read found 10,000 readings or read an error. We've read a result that could still be either one of these things, okay? If it succeeds, it'll be a string. If it failed, it might have an error inside. Now you can read the successful value directly from the result if you want to, but you have gotta make sure and handle errors appropriately. So we say something like this. Uh, do output, at our local state value, is try result dot get and or catch output equals error error dot localized description like that and that'll now read the string out if it can if it can't it'll throw the error up and handle it across here alternatively you can switch on the result and write code to check both success and failure cases each of those cases have their own value inside. So they get the string for success and error for failure. So if Swift lets us read those values out using a specially crafted case match. This bit is strange. Okay, this, this syntax is weird. I know it's weird. We're stuck with it. Up here we can say switch on result. Case dot success let stir output equals stir or case.failure, let error, output equals error, and then we'll do error.localized description again, like that. So what we're saying here is, if the result was successful, it worked correctly, give me the string from inside the success. But if the result failed somehow, give me the error, so I can then work with it. Now regards of how you handle it, the advantage of this result type is, it lets us store the result of the whole work, success or failure combined in one single value, and then pass that around freely wherever we want for as long as we need, and read the error or successful value only when we're ready.